Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our Realistic series. I've amended it slightly, so I've got 18 different random events. Nine of them are positives and nine of them are negatives and I'm hoping that I've got a reasonable balance between them. So number one is mold in the storage barn. We must immediately sell the crop which has the highest stored quantity for the lowest price available. Now, if we're saving up our crops for something, this is going to be really troublesome. And also, I do need to specify what I mean by crops, because we've got several different things that can be stored on the farm. Um, if we have a look here, we've got all of these storage here. I've got wood chip, I've got well, that's pistachios and sugar beets. So I'm saying that um, we'll class crops. So we won't class wood chips because it doesn't matter if they go moldy. Um, but we will class any of the other feed as a, a crop. So we've got olives. We've got um, almonds. And uh, there's pistachios, sugar beet, potatoes. And then we've got the conventional grain or all of the different grains that can be stored. So we've got a lot of different um, grains and, and various different crops that we can store. And we have to, with this one, sell whichever one has got the highest stored quantity. So if we're doing root crops, it's most likely going to hit us with the root crops, which is unfortunate. Um, but that is a risk. We have a 1 in 18 chance of getting that per season. So, so long as we're not aiming to keep lots of crops for many seasons, um, we'll do all right. So that's one. Uh, number two is high yield. Calculate the current value of a random store crop and add 25% of that figure in cash to your account to represent a bumper crop. So if I do get bumper crops and stuff, I'm not going to fiddle around with adding quantities of materials in like I've done previously. I'm just going to add in uh, an extra bit of money to our account. That is what most of them do is we just we have it sort of added in as cash. It's much easier to deal with and much easier to keep on top of as well. So I, I figured that would actually be a, a better way of dealing with it this time round. Let me just reverse back down here a minute and get that one. Number three, pests in a storage barn. Remove 25% of a random stored crop. It's about um, keeping track of things and, and so on. And then the next one, I'm immediately doing that. But yeah, I, I, I think that one would just remove a quarter of a random stored crop. I mean, it might end up doing that as a value as well. Uh, disease in number four is disease in the field. Cultivate one half of a random field that has been planted, I might add, with a crop to represent the loss. And this does include grass fields. Um, number five, a problem with pest crows means you need to take steps to thin the population. I'm just going to leave this one here a minute because I want to be able to read and also talk. So we're going to admire the front mounted plough for just a little bit longer and while we're doing so I can keep reading. A problem with pest crows means you need to take steps to thin the population. Your grateful neighbours give you something for your time. Add 5,000 to your account. Delivery bonus, the next trailer load of crops you uh, to be sold will get double the normal price. So I'll just have to make a note of whatever we get and uh, double that up. Storm damage, 25% chance of a building being damaged and it cannot then be used for six months. And this is because it takes quite a long time to repair a damaged building. 75% chance of a vehicle being destroyed by the storm. Immediately sell the vehicle to the dealership. Um, that's to represent... Um, like, uh, selling it straight to the dealership represents a, a financial loss because although insurance does cover some things, it doesn't like, necessarily cover everything and you, you will end up incurring a bit of a, a financial penalty. It's just one of those things. So, uh, yeah, it's a 1 in 4... 25% uh, and 75%. Uh, so, number 8, vet bills pay out 100 per animal on the farm in unexpected vet bills. I'm including chickens in this. If we've got 10,000 chickens on a farm, we're going to have to pay out um, 
<laughs> 100 per chicken at 10,000 chickens. Uh, that, 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 that's 1 million. Hmm. We're not having 10,000 chickens. I'm just going to draw the line at 10,000 chickens. We're, we're not doing that. We're, but yeah, 100 per animal. Uh, twins. A large number of animals give birth to twins or larger litters than normal. Increase your stock count by 10% or add 10k to your account. So I can choose which one I want to do. Animals escape. It's number 10. Animals escape and damage nearby farmer's crop. Pay 25,000 in damages. Number 11. Animals give a higher than normal yield. Add 10k to your account. Number 12. A rare colouring found on one of your newborn animals. Sell it for an eye-watering amount to some rare breeds enthusiasts. Add 25k to your account. 13 is machine breakdown. A tractor or loader has broken down and cannot be used this month. Random. So, essentially, I just have to randomly generate one of our tractors or uh, loader machines. So, if we've got a telehandler, wheel loader, anything like that, um, it'll be randomly selected from one of those. And we cannot use it for one month. Number 14, theft. Sell a random machine to the store without taking it there. Because you left the cab unlocked, the insurance only pays out some of the value and not all of it. Always lock the cabs. Number 15. Fire. Sell a machine to the store and buy it back. Again, it's a random machine. I do say sell to the store and then buy back. We don't have to buy it back if we don't want to. We may decide that that is the opportunity we um, needed in order to change the machine or upgrade it or get something different entirely so we don't have to buy it back number 16 a lottery win add d20 times 10,000 to your account number 17 barn find discover a collectible vehicle in a barn and buy it for a bargain add d20 times 3k to your account so we potentially on those two the lottery one we could have 20 times 10,000 um and the barn find we could have up to 20 times 3,000, which is a nice little bit of money. And finally, number 18, receive an amazing offer from a neighbour. You can buy four of the 5k pallets from the store to do what you like with. And those are these ones in here. We were using them in the last one. Uh, under pallets in here, there is some large pallets. It's these right here. We've got pretty much everything available in the game on these. We've got barley, well, all of the different um, crops. is silage, straw, sugarcane, uh, chicken feed, mixed ration, fertilizer right there, road salt. I'm sure that we want that. Uh, but anyway, um, all of these different ones, we they cost 1,000 euros and we get 5,000 litres of whichever it is that we're buying. And in this one, we've got this amazing deal from a neighbouring farmer who has got this stuff lying around. Maybe it's a year old or something like that. So it's not quite pre premium quality, but it's still there and he needs it out of his way. So we can buy four... How many did I say? Uh, four of the pallets, which means that we end up with 20,000 litres or whatever it is that we want to buy. So we're allowed to buy four of these. And we can buy any four we want. So we could have one barley, one canola, one chaff, and one maize. And we get 5,000 litres on each pallet. So it's 20,000 litres. We can do whatever we like with it. If I want to, I can go straight away and buy a pallet of soybeans for 1,000. I get 5,000 litres of them. And I can immediately go and sell the 20,000 litres of soybeans at, the, um, at wherever it is that we can sell soybeans. So if we go and have a look at the price of soybeans at the moment, they are 878 per thousand. We would make a very tidy sum out of that. A very tidy sum indeed. So that's something that we can do if we want to. We can go and sell it or we can get something in that uh, we really need that would be quite useful to us. It's entirely up to us what we do with it. Um, there are no restrictions on that whatsoever. So that is my list of random events. I hope you like them. There are 18. And by my calculations, there were 9 positives and 9 negatives. So we've got a balance. I don't feel that anything is too extreme. And I also don't feel that any of those are really going to hit us hard and hold us back 
for the series, which was another thing that a lot of you felt was quite important that I make sure this time around. Okay. He's going to carry on. I have waffled on for long enough. What I was actually thinking of doing was uh, just enlarging this field slightly and getting rid of this line all around the edge because this is just really going to bug me so much. Um, so if I was to like, allow create fields and then drive around the outside edge of this field and do it like that, because then I'd get rid of this stripy line. Oh, there's a line there that we want to get rid of. I, I missed that. Right, that. Can I even see it? I don't even know where it is. I think it's there. It's on a little bit. It's here somewhere. Did I just do one pass? Right, I think it's here somewhere. So I'm just going to drop the plow down. I'm going to do this. And, oh, there I see it now. I'm not actually going to do um, the allow create fields around the edge of the field at the moment. I'm going to leave that much as I really want to go and do it, uh, I'm going to leave it for a minute because um, we've got other things that we want to do. So if I'm going to mix and match the crops that we're doing, I'm thinking of getting some chickens at the moment. Um, I'm kind like uh, I'm busy plowing up that grass field at the moment, and then I'm also wanting to uh, now be able to have the is that is he stop oh he hasn't stopped he's gotten stuck huh yeah right <laughs> I freed it and oh he hasn't actually turned around so I'll just start from this bit up here instead because he hasn't uh, rotated the plows over I go there. He should just take off across the field in a nice straight line. Excellent. Okay, that one can carry on there and do that bit. So I'm getting rid of the grass in this field, and it was questioned whether or not I should be getting rid of the grass in this field because there's a lot of... Well, you know, maybe I should have cut it first, but I didn't feel the need to cut it. Because it well, one, it's too short to cut anyway, so um, it's not like we'd have been able to do anything with it. If we go to growth, it's just freshly cut on there, so it we would have had to wait for it to grow back. The field does have needs plowing. It also requires lime. We've got uh, no rolling needs on our fields at the moment. Um... But we do need lime on that one. There's no more needs ploughing anywhere. We don't actually have a needs ploughing. And weeds. Right, we've got weeds over on other fields, but not on these. I've At the moment, I've got these five fields. Now, something that I was wondering about is if I'm going to be getting manure in order to make fertilizer for the farm, do I get livestock here? beyond like there's a chicken pen over here that I, I was wanting to get a few chickens with and i do think that we should get some chickens and, and we we should have those at least to start off with where do the pallets oh, they're in under there that's gonna be we can get 120 chickens in here and we have two and a half thousand liters of food that we can get for them if I go there where well, it doesn't actually say anything. Uh, so I've got a little bit of grain. So, I mean, we could buy some chickens or we could put them in and we get a supply of eggs coming out. That would be absolutely great. And then I need to think about where we're going to get manure. The other thing that I want is, one, we're going to need pallets. And we've either got to go down here and we've got to buy this bit. Actually, I don't think we have to buy it. Do we have to buy field 70 maybe? Right, I'm thinking of, uh, I, I'm not sure what I got up to, I had some issues. So any, anyway, um, I, I'm thinking of doing a, 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 getting a biogas plant. So we've got the south biogas plant down here, which will end up costing us like a quarter of a million. But the problem with that one is it's so far away from our farm. Like we, we can 
put something up there, but there's there's a long journey all the way up here in order to be able to get to it. Like you can't, there's no shortcuts anywhere, which means that we need to buy fields here in order to be able to fill that one up with silage. I don't think that's very convenient. There's one over here as well, the East Biogas Plant. And again, it's a little bit of a trip to go up through there to one of our fields, but I feel that we could buy field 36 because it's close to the farm anyway. And uh, that, that that's sort of, I think that would work out all right. So that one's 255,000, and the biogas plant itself is another 240,000, which is a big chunk of our money. That is a big, big chunk of our money. But this would get us some um, digestate and also make us a pile of money as well from selling the silage. So that I those two options right there, I, I think, are going to do us quite a lot of good. Uh, this field is currently in potatoes. I don't want to get into potato harvesting at the moment. So I'm going to leave that. And we'll wait until next spring before we go and do anything. Or at least until after the potatoes have been harvested. Because if we're going to be wanting to plant corn in here to do a silage crop that will go into that field right there. Into the silo right there. Um, we need the planting window for corn, which is April and May, by which time the potatoes in this field will be harvested and then we will buy the field. I think that's going to be the best way to do it because I don't want to um, deal with harvesting potatoes at the moment. So we are currently preparing our own fields. Now, I've got this field here. They've finished this one. There's a little bit of tidy up work to go and do. When I say a little bit. There's actually quite a lot of tidy up work to go and do. But we can start working on this. Um, You're going to laugh at me. I've gone and ploughed this field up. I mean, it did say that it needed ploughing. Although I don't believe the um, needs ploughing uh, status actually affects grass yields in any way, shape or form. But still... I'm seriously considering replanting this field with grass because I just think it's going to be easier with those uh, pylons in the middle of the field there. I think it's going to end up being easier for us overall if we were to... Like, why are you being a bit weird with that front one? It does struggle with that a little bit, doesn't it? But anyway, um, yeah, with those pylons being there... We can still do it. We can still do a different crop around there. But I am wondering about doing grass again. And the reason that I'm sort of seriously considering doing grass in here again is because, one, I am thinking of getting an animal. It's We're going to need either pigs or cattle. It's got to be one or the other. If we have pigs, then we're going to want to... Uh, where we'll be needing to supply them with a whole load of different pig foods, uh, with, with grains in order to make pig food. And if we have cows, then we're going to be wanting grass. Um, and this field might just be easier to do with grass. But I'm leaving that up to you. Do, do, do you want me to do livestock? And also, if you do want me to do livestock, which livestock do you want me to do? Do you want to see pigs? Do you want to see cows? Do you want to see sheep? Do you not want to see livestock? Um... Let me know in the comment section and we will get to that. Right, you carry on there for a second. And you're still running. Yeah, because I had issues. I can't, I, I'm not entirely sure what bits you've seen and what bits you didn't see. So uh, I'm just going to carry on and assume that you've seen most of it. If you didn't see it, I did uh, just tidy up this field. But we've still got this strip around the edge that really does irritate me. That, 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 that's one thing that really does bug me. I'm going to have to do that at some point. I really am. Now, I don't have a workshop on this farm, which is something that I am going to change. I'm going to also want a pressure washer somewhere on this farm, which we don't have at the moment. So maybe we should deal with both of those right now. We go into construction. We need to go to tools. Uh, you've got this workshop pack right there. Uh, I don't really want that. Uh, that's an expensive one. Um, container vehicle workshop there. This is a really cheap workshop. Considering the type of farm that we've got, I feel that we should invest a bit of money in a, in a reasonable workshop. Um, if we go off the base game workshop, 
So that one, it's about 45,000. So that is going to be our kind of price guide for our own work workshop that we use. What's this? Crop input cooperative mode. This building we use for buying fertilizer and lime. All right. I've decided what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn this into my workshop. So I'm going to have this one as... Well, it doesn't even need to be an active one, does it? I, I could put that one there so that we can drive... Actually, it would be better if I put it here because then it's easier to get the machinery into it and, and lined up. I think... No, we'll go with the middle one. So I'll put that into the middle bay. There, like that. So that's now our workshop. So it's the vehicle workshop. But I want this whole thing. Like, we've got a really big farm here. So I feel that we ought to have um, something reasonable for our actual workshop here. And also, I want a, um, a pressure washer as well. So we've got a, a still pressure washer right there, uh, which... I'm not sure. We got this Karcher one right here. I actually really like this one. This this one. It, it, I'm not even sure. I think this is the one I'm also using in the time lapse series. Uh, but like a pressure washer. I don't want that too close to that there. But I've actually got an idea for this. If we go into decoration and we're in fences, I want a wall to go along his side, and we'll stick a pressure washer. Well, kind of there. And then we'd be able to have the wall along part of this. So kind of like the, the wall is going to go here. And then the pressure washer is going to go just the other side of the wall. And we can bring the hose through there. But we're not spraying a load of water in there. It's kind of my idea. Let's bring that one back so that we lose a pillar. There. That one's going to go there like that. And then I get the pressure washer. Let's find the pressure washer. Uh, buildings, tools. So I have this Karcher pressure washer. And what I'd like to do with this one is I want to turn it round. Actually, I'm going to put it facing this way. And it's going to go there, kind of in against the wall. I just want to make sure that it's lining up straight here. Yeah, that's fairly straight there now. Okay, so that's going to go right there like that. So that's in against the wall. It's tucked in behind, which means that we can park our machinery here and we can hose it off. Then it's not spraying all of the mud back into the workshop. We've got a, a protective wall there in front of it and the machinery out here. The water will drain down that way and drain out down here over the side into the field. Plus we have our workshop. We have a lifting platform. No, I don't want a lifting platform. All right, I added in a few extra decorations on here just because I thought it would look pretty cool. So we've got uh, all kinds of just junk chucked in the back of the workshop back here. I've got some heavy-duty shelving that's not got very much on it. And I've also put in a game console. So, um, yeah, I I've now got a working workshop. And we also have a pressure washer to go with it, which is absolutely fantastic. So all I need to do is head over to said workshop and pressure washer and we can test them out. Just make sure that they are all tickety-boo. So let's drive in around here a second. Now there isn't actually a interact point. So I don't know where I'm supposed to stand on this. Oh, here's the interact point. Right inside like this. So I can repair that one for 33, that one for 2, and that one 433. Excellent. Right, so that is all working as intended. Fantastic. I really like it. And then I'm going to bring it over here, and we're going to just test out the pressure washer as well. So this one over here... Uh, bring up the pressure washer and then I, well, I, I can't actually fit through there but we can go around the outside here and then we can hose it off for those of you who uh, have asked in the past and probably ask again the current uh, little HUD that you see to show the percentage of the pressure washer that is a mod on the mod hub is just called pressure washer HUD that's it it's, it's a really simple mod and that's all it does it just shows 
the percentage of dirt remaining on the vehicle and I really like it it doesn't change it doesn't show you until you actually start using the spray lamps on the item that you're cleaning so you can't look at an item and see what percentage is until you start the clean process but once you do then you're able to hose it off and you can see exactly how much is left and this is really useful because sometimes it's difficult to see whether or not it's actually clean or not and I know and then you like you get it out to the field and the lighting is slightly different and you're like oh I missed a bit there um, I didn't quite leave it cleaning for long enough but here you know right that's now fully clean I can put that one away and then I've got my tractor with the plow everything is done and we're away so now I've got to find somewhere to put this plow and also can I drive out of here what have we got here for storage well there's storage here and I'm not going to be using this plow again so I'm going to leave the plow in here I think for now Bring that one around like that. And this one can go into this far bay in here. I know that this would probably be like a, a bale storage or something like that, but I'm happy leaving it with this one. So I'll put that in there and unhitch that one. Now, I'm going to want to start doing some planting. We're in August at the moment. So the only planting that we need to worry about today is the canola. And other than that, we don't need to worry about it. If I'm going to be doing some... So I'm not going to start planting at the moment. If I'm going to be doing some uh, silage, I'm going to need to make sure that I also get the silage equipment. And that's where most of our money is going to come from. I'm going to need a forager and, and things like that. So I was asked why it is I wasn't uh, spending out money on uh, grass equipment while I was mowing the grass instead, uh, uh, not mowing the grass, while I was uh, cutting the grass instead. And I'll be honest, the, reason, the, the main reason for it is I don't want to spend money on grass equipment and baler and everything else just yet because I'm a bit concerned that I might run out of money. I've only got 1.2 million. Uh, well, I had 1.2 million. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of money. It really isn't. So uh, I'm being very careful about that. Now, I wonder if I can reverse this trailer in here. Because we're done with the trailer for now. Although I suppose I could use it for doing the whole chickens thing. Um, I can move the grain to the chickens. Let's reverse that one in there. Go on, we can do this. And... And you go. Right, that, that'll do right there. I'm going to leave it hitched on for a second. And we've got a little bit of tidy up work to do on this skin. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.